Hello. This is going to be a quick review of the Unit 1 booklet. I'm going to go through the booklet itself, scrolling down. So on the left side of your screen, on the right side, if I need to, we'll solve some uh, questions or I'll show you how some of the workings in detail, give you a little bit of detail to the booklet. So we'll start off with integer addition and subtraction. So the idea of integer addition and subtraction is that we're adding numbers like 3 plus 4 that's easy right equals 7 so that's integer addition integers are all whole numbers meaning non-decimal that have either a positive or a negative sign in front of them the key thing about integer addition and subtraction that I'm going to for those of you that haven't done it in a while that's a zero is I'm going to ask that you always 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 use a number line so you don't need an exact number line just a general so we start off with a three we move four to the right so that's always positive is to the right negative is to the left and we go with four steps one two three four and we end up with seven so this goes to the same for something like three minus four so let's look at that we start off with the same position here, 3, except we're going to go to the left. Four steps. 1, 2, 3, 4. And we end up with minus 1. Three steps gets us to 0. And then one more step down gets us to negative 1. Those of you that can do all these in your head, you're doing this visual part anyway. The tricky part is when we start getting something like this. Well, it gets a little more tricky when we have negative 3 minus 4. Except if you use a number line, it's really not that tricky because we start off over here at negative 3. And then which direction do we move in? Left or right? Left. 1, 2, 3. Sorry, 4 steps. We end up with, sorry, negative 7. Because we go negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7. And for now, if you need to do, use your fingers, use anything, whatever you need to do, except just punching these numbers into a calculator, go ahead. Finally, the more tricky one is negative 3 minus negative 4. And for this one, logically, there's really very little that makes sense. You start off with negative 3, that way, that's easy. Now, if it was take away positive 4, we'd go to the left. But it's take away negative 4, so then we have to go the opposite way, which would be to the right. So again, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, we end up with positive 1. So on the left here, you have some practice questions. Use the number line. In the integers booklet, I go over this number line as well and you can use it to help you be successful in this section. There we go. So now we're going to look at multiplying. With multiplying, the key thing is to remember these cases. Memorize them, then go ahead. So there's really very little except memorizing this section here that will be helpful. And so I'm going to go ahead to the next section because I think the multiplication and Division of integers is pretty straightforward. Addition and subtraction is conceptually a lot more challenging. Now, rounding. So we have something like, we're going to round 6,145,367,448 to the nearest billion. First thing I do, the steps that I'm giving you here, is I look at the name of the digits. So this is billion, so I look at the billions digits. I look at the number after. The number after, it's less than 5. If it's less than 5, then I replace all these with zeros, i.e. 6,145,367,448 is approximately 6 
billion. So we've approximated, we've brought in a number that's a lot simpler to conceptualize. That's still fairly close to the original number. What do we do with decimals? So let's say it's 65, 657 decimal 3394 to the nearest hundredth is, th is very important because that indicates I'm rounding to the nearest hundredth. This is the digit I'm interested in. I look at the digit after. It's greater than or equal to 5. So what happens? I have to add 1 to the 3. So I end up with 657, that stays, sorry, 657.3400. But we don't write these. So my answer is 657.3394 is approximately 657.34. I've rounded off to the nearest hundredth. Mathematicians love shortcuts. And so do you. So you are like a mathematician. Key part is, we don't want to keep writing out over and over and over. So we replace five times five times five to five five to the five to the power of four. So we have five to the four. That's called the base, and this is called the exponent. Okay, the power. When we talk about powers, we're really talking about the whole thing. So if you remember that 5 to the 4th equals 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, then you'll be able to solve most questions with exponents, even if you don't remember all the shortcuts. And there are quite a few. So now, how do I evaluate that? Well, I can take calculator. And so on your calculator, you can have either next to the Y button. Sorry, X to the Y or you're going to have um, a button that looks like this. There's many possibilities that you have for entering. You have to enter the 5 as the base and the 4 as the exponent. In this case you have to do the same thing. So how do you evaluate it? If you don't have a calculator, well you just multiply these out. 5 times 5 is 25 and this 5 times 5 25. 25 times 25 just happens to be, I think, 625. <coughs> now the other thing I, you just need to remember is anything, any x to the power of 0 to the exponent 0 equals 1. The other thing you need to memorize is that if you have 5 to the power of negative 4, and this is very important because this becomes confusing for a lot of people, that negative 4 means so that's a shortcut for mathematicians. The negative here does not mean there's a negative in front. And so there's some practice questions here with that. Order of operation is really important that you do things just in the order it says right here. First, start off with brackets, exponents, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. So if you see a question like 3 plus 4 times 7, that does not equal, do this first, 7 times 7 equals 49. That's incorrect because you've got to do multiplication before you do the addition. So 3 plus 4 times 7 equals 3 plus 28. So these are rules that you have to memorize essentially and then use them very carefully. The other thing I want to make sure that you do is you get start memorizing these again or relearning these. Sum is an answer for addition, difference for subtraction, product for multiplication, quotient for division. So there are a lot of practice questions here. You'll see some have exponents. So you have to think about where the exponents go. Some have brackets. You do what's inside the brackets before you do what's outside the brackets. So this will give you quite a bit of practice with that. But the basic principle is pretty straightforward. Now, scientific notation is another 
shortcut, which uses powers. And for scientific notation, what you need to be comfortable with is all of the hundredth versus hundredth, million versus millionth, thousand versus thousandth, ten thousand versus ten thousandth. So I would like you to fill out this chart and just get comfortable with and remind yourself of the decimal form, the fractional form, and then the power form of these. So I've got some here to give you to get you started on the concept. So those are, I can't stress enough how important those are. What you need to do is you're either going to be converting from standard to scientific notation or from sorry scientific notation to standard so from standard number to scientific notation is more complicated we'll start off with scientific notation to standard so if I have a number like 4.7759 times 10 to the let's do a negative negative 4 okay what do I do here well this is really easy because I just have that number there and I have to multiply this is multiplication times this number. And I know what this number is because I know exponents. So 10 to the negative 4 equals 1 over 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 equals 1 over 10,000. Or you can write it as a decimal, 0 0.0001. Is that enough? Yes. So it's up to you how you conceptualize it. You can punch this into your calculator, but that would be the less interesting way because you would be forcing yourself to think about this number as a fraction or a decimal. But that, that could work as well. So what we'll see is when we multiply this, we'll actually get, imagine you multiply 4, forget all this stuff here, 4 times 1 over 10,000. Hmm. So that's like 4 over 10,000. Okay, so you can kind of get a picture of what that number is going to be. It's going to be pretty small. And it's going to come out to be... And you can see how scientific notation is a lot easier to conceptualize than this ugliness. And that's really why mathematicians do a lot of shortcuts. Now, from standard number to scientific notation is a little more tricky, but let's take the same number. 0 0.0004759 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say well you're going to have some number here that we're going to fit in and it's going to be times 10 to the something up here correct now this is the only thing you really have to memorize is that you go to the first non-zero number that's a zero 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 first non-zero number is a four you put a decimal after and then you write all the rest of the numbers. 7, 7, 5, 9. And times 10 to the something. Well, what's that something that's going to change this number into this ugliness? Well, how many spots does the decimal have to move? So that's one way to conceptualize it. Say so 1, 2, 3, 4. Or what are you multiplying this number by to get this number? Well, it's by 10,000. 5,000 will get you here. 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. Okay. That's exponent 4. Now the question is, is it going to be positive or negative? Why do I have that circled? And it's negative because, because we want to make this number smaller. So we're going to be multiplying it by a fraction. So this number is going to be become smaller. If we had a number like 47759, we'd have the same first but the exponent would change. So the same first element, 4.7759, but now this number, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 10,000, so that's a positive 4. That's the end of part 1. We've gotten through about halfway of booklet one. Thank you.